In this future state we're envisioning, we have near ubiquitous, continuous, real-time sensing. That's kind of a, a lot of words to wrap your head around, but we're, we're thinking constellations on the orders of tens or hundreds of thousands of satellites that are detecting all sorts of different phenomenologies everywhere all the time. And what can we do with that fire hose of information? And how do we use that in an efficient way? So what we're illustrating here is different types of scenarios that we could use near real time ubiquitous sensing and how that enables uh, responses that today are sci-fi. What, what becomes real in 30 years? Um, so in this case, it was a forest fire response. Um, in the next scenario, this is a, a moon-based scenario. So we have astronauts on the moon, let's say, as an example. It's a hazardous environment. There's, uh, that moon is, is uh, pitted with asteroid impacts. And in this scenario, we have uh, a potential asteroid impact that may impact a site. So we have to go in and redirect that, that asteroid in time for it not to do any damage. Recently with the you know, asteroid redirection mission, that's the optimal scenario where I know years in advance that something is potentially an issue. But what if I only have seconds to respond? How do I do that? So a lot of our, the scenarios that we look at are in these very tight timelines. And a lot of the scenarios our customers are worried about are in very tight timelines. So being able to autonomously, in a trusted way, in a human explainable way, uh, determine what's wrong, what's the optimal strategy to respond to that, and to be able to explain that to a human operator, hey, the system just maneuvered a satellite, here's why. Do that in a trusted way, near real time, based on your network of sensing that gives you near, uh, near omnipotence of what everything is going, where everything is, what's going on, uh, near in continuous interconnectivity, high bandwidth data connectivity that allows everything to know what everything else is doing near real time. So in this case, uh, we have uh, an asteroid impact that's uh, coming into the Earth. Um, there's uh, potentially a need for intercept there. Right now, we hope that we have uh, knowledge of ask potential threatening asteroids years in advance, but there's no guarantee of that. We're doing things right now like machine learning optimized mission planning. We're looking at data fusion across multiple layers of, of data coming from a wide array of sources to generate next level quality uh, data products. We're enhancing operators with machine learning capabilities. We're doing constellation level coordination and planning, which is, are all really challenging problems. Scaling that to the future heterogeneous constellation of hundreds of thousands of nodes, potentially, we're talking about, is a, it's a big problem. Scaling that capability globally is a, is a dream that we've projected here, and I think we'll get there. This is where you know, empathetic and human factor design becomes important. You can have these complicated, gigantic constellations of sensors and fire hoses of data, but it's not really useful to the people. So machine learning plays an important part in making that data ingestible to a, a re, an average person. Uh, you need to be able to control, uh, command, optimize, coordinate all of these different responses across space, air, ground, sea, different third party operators, and be able to coordinate those activities in a way that's human understandable and is manageable with a small team, and which is a challenging problem when you're talking about the, the scale of, of build out and constellations that the future will have.